This is Kenneth Wong, contributing editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. Let's talk about options. Design options, to be exact. Take this part. It's fairly simple, a kind of bracket that's meant to sit on a plane and endure a force coming from above. Now, if you know the amount of force or the maximum stress you'd like it to be able to withstand, can you come up with the best height for this part? Well, I have no doubt that you can, but it'll take experimenting with the model in various extrusion scenarios. There'll be quite a bit of number crunching involved too. As it turns out, your computer is much better and faster at number crunching. So why not let your CAD software run various scenarios and present you with the best possible option? That's what the new design optimization feature in SOLIDWORKS 2010 is developed to do. But before we can run hypothetical scenarios, we'll have to get some basic statistics on the part's strength and the stress it's anticipating. So let's just run the simulation express on it, shall we? I'll define these four base surfaces as fixed positions. I'll then add a force to its top surface. Then I'll specify that the part is to be made in steel alloy. OK, the part is now ready for analysis. So let's run it. Here then are the results. The animation showing how it'll deform, the stress breakdown, and the displacement breakdown. Now let's use the design study tab to start an optimization experiment. To do that, you need to pick a few parameters to experiment with. I'll pick this extrusion height as one of those. I'll set it as a range, so the software can essentially rebuild this model with different height for each scenario. Now I'll also pick this extrusion representing the height of the foot as another range to experiment with. I'll then pick a constraint to tell the software to keep the results within a certain standard. For this scenario, I'll use the simulation data we just run and archived, then pick the maximum stress as the desired constraint. Then I'll set a goal. This is me essentially telling the software what I'm trying to do. In this case, I'll say, I'd like to study its mass, I'd like to figure out the best possible volume, in other words, Show me a design option that let me get away with as little material as possible while still being able to take on the maximum stress. Now I can take a look at the table view to make sure that all the different scenarios are set properly. Then I'll just hit run. As SOLIDWORKS goes to work, you'll notice that the software is regenerating the model with various configurations that you have specified. Now the results. It turns out, for the upper part, I can actually get away with 1 inch extrusion as opposed to the 2 inch extrusion I initially used. Here, I can see that some scenarios failed because of the geometry that cannot be resolved for this configuration. Now if I agree with the optimal configuration suggested by the software, all I have to do is accept the edits. The model is now rebuilt with the new parameters. One observation here. It seems when I was ready to run optimization scenarios, I only have the option to experiment with the parameters that are part of my construction history. I can pick these two extrusion heights values because they were part of the methods I used to create the model. I can't, for instance, pick this parameter that's not part of my construction history. That means if you decide to use this feature to optimize your design, you might want to put some thoughts into which parameters you'd eventually want to be able to experiment with and leave that as an open-ended one and make sure that that's part of your parametric model construction history. So, if you have some parts you're not quite happy with, try running the optimization study to see if SOLIDWORKS might come up with something better than your original idea. Who knows? You might be surprised. This is the third one in the video series called A Closer Look at SOLIDWORKS 2010. 
The other twos are about SOLIDWORKS Sustainability Express and Multibody Sheet Metal Parts. You can find them at Virtual Desktop Blog or at the new Desktop Engineering fan page on Facebook. Till next time, this is Kenneth Wong for Desktop Engineering.